You know what I learned from watching Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? If you're just a little different, people will treat you like shit until they need something from you. Um, where were we? Okay, I think this is chapter five. Um, bliss. Sort of romantic, but more of the bliss side of it. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Full fathom five thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a, on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. The groves, the skies, the fountains, every region near seemed all one mutual cry. I never heard so musical a discord, such sweet thunder. This next chapter is Oaths and Vows, and there's, there's a few of those in Shakespeare. By my troth, and in good earnest, and so God mend me, and by all pretty oaths that are not dangerous, if you break one jot of your promise, or come one minute behind your hour, I will think you the most pathetical break promise, and the most hollow lover, and the most unworthy that may be chosen out of the gross band of the unfaithful. Therefore, beware my censure, and keep your promise. I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head. I pray you, do not fall in love with me, for I am falser than vows made in wine. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire in the blood. I will die a hundred thousand deaths ere I break the smallest parcel of this vow. Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, makes marriage vows as false as dicer's oaths. O oh, shame, where is thy blush? I of ladies most deject and wretched that suck the honey music of his vows. I had rather hear my dark bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. Upon my knees I charm you by my once commended beauty, by all your vows of love and that great vow which did incorporate and make us one that you unfold to me yourself, your half. When the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. By the sacred radiance of the sun, the mysteries of Hecate and the night, by all the operation of the orbs from whom we do exist and cease to be. Next chapter, Betrayal. There's a little bit of that in Shakespeare, too. Mine eyes are full of tears I cannot see, and yet salt water brines them not so much that they can see a sort of traitors here. I am one that loved not wisely, but too well, one whose hand threw a pearl away richer than all his tribe. You are more intemperate in your blood than Venus, or those pampered animals that rage in savage sensuality. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. 
There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. A honey tongue, a heart of gall, is fancy's spring, but sorrow's fall. Soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, in folly ripe, in reason rotten. Rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. O oh God, a beast that wants discourse or reason would have mourned longer. O oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Methought a serpent eat my heart away, and you sit smiling at his cruel prey. Hath no man's dagger here a point for me? Why, ever, was thou lovely in my eyes? Love make his heart a flint that you shall love. Farewell, fair cruelty. Sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds. Lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. O oh, serpent heart hid with a flowery face, Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend angelical, O oh, nature, what hadst thou to do in hell when thou didst bower the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh? Was ever book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace! Love is not full of pity, as men say, but deaf and cruel where he means to pray. You go not till I set up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you, and let me wring your heart, for so I shall if it be made of penetrable stuff. Presume not on thy heart when mine is slain. Thou gavest me thy not to give back again. Sorry. Maybe it's just late. Maybe it's better that it's late. Mine eyes were not at fault, for she was beautiful. Mine eye ears that heard her flattery, nor my heart that thought her like her seeming. Oh. She is but the sign and semblance of her, of her honor. Oh, what authority and show of truth can cunning sin cover itself withal? She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. What a falling off was there for me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage, and to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. But virtue, as it never will be moved, though lewdness courted in a shape of heaven, so lust, though to a radiant angel linked, will sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. Leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. I have sworn thee fair, thought thee bright, who art as black as hell, as dark as night. What shall I say to thee? Thou cruel, ingrateful, savage, and inhuman creature, 
thou that didst bear the key of all my counsels, that knewest the very bottom of my soul. This is from Mary Stuart, Queen of Scotland, from the sonnets to Bothwell. For him I turned my honor to disgrace, though honor is our one pure pride and joy. As a woodcock to mine own springe, I am justly killed with mine own treachery. They are not near my conscience. Their defeat does by their own insinuation grow. Tis dangerous when the baser nature comes between the pass and fell insensed points of mighty opposites. This was the most unkindest cut of all. Okay, so enough of that bleary-eyed stuff. Uh, here's a better one. Lost love and then sorrow. Lost love. <clears throat> How the hours have racked and tortured me since I have lost thee. What we have, we prize not the worth whiles we enjoy it. But being lacked and lost, why then we rack the value. That our stars, unreconciliable, should divide our equalness to this. Do you not love me? Do you not indeed? Well, do not then, for since you love me not, I will not love myself. Um, I need a break. I'll call you back in a minute.